Have you ever felt so guilty for something you did that you wanted to end your life? Have you ever regretted something you did but didn't know how to rid yourself of the weight of guilt? Then you will understand the story of Judas Iscariot. It's a shame that a man with such a tremendous apostolic calling fell so low. Judas Iscariot, who handled and managed large sums of money for over three years as the treasurer of the Lord and his disciples, sold his master for 30 pieces of silver. It's difficult to say whether Judas really needed the money or if it was just the temptation of having a little extra to spend that led him to commit this horrible act. However, what is certain is that Judas was not trustworthy. He was not faithful to his calling or his fellow disciples. If you have the privilege of being in a position of trust, be loyal and faithful. Be accountable for yourself and others. Judas Iscariot was a perfect tool in the hands of the devil. He was an ambitious and greedy man, willing to sell his master for a handful of silver coins. Judas was unable to control his desires, which made him vulnerable to temptation. The devil saw this and exploited it. When Jesus was reclining at the table with his disciples, he said that one of them would betray him. Judas was the only one who felt distressed by this statement. He knew he was guilty. Jesus gave Judas one last chance to change. He said that the one who would betray him would be condemned to hell. But Judas did not accept the offer. He continued with his plan of betrayal. And when evening came, he sat down with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Matthew 26, 20, 25. The story of Judas's betrayal is a story about the power of the devil. It teaches us that we must always be vigilant against temptation and that we must always strive to be faithful to God. If greed had not consumed Judas's heart, he might have stopped in his tracks. During the Last Supper, Jesus told Judas that he would betray him. The Lord's words should have stopped Judas, but his ears were deafened by the power of greed and the desire for money. Judas then sought an opportunity to betray the one he loved. He found that opportunity in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus was praying. Judas kissed Jesus as a signal to the Roman soldiers who were waiting. After his enormous betrayal, Judas began to feel remorse. In the final minutes of Judas in Matthew's account, he was seen betraying Jesus in Gethsemane. Judas probably accompanied Jesus to the temple in Caiaphas's palace complex, where he stayed throughout the Jewish trial. Judas returned the money he had received from the Jewish priests and took his own life. When Judas saw that Jesus had been condemned, he was overcome with remorse. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death, and they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Then, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Matthew 27, 1, 4. Judas knew he had made a terrible mistake. He had betrayed the man he had promised to follow. He had betrayed the Messiah. Judas tried to undo his mistake, but it was too late. Jesus' blood had already been shed. Judas's remorse is a story about the importance of repentance. It teaches us that it's never too late to change our ways. Judas's end is a tragic and enigmatic story. He was overcome with remorse for his betrayal of Jesus, but he did not repent of his sin. Judas returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood.
This action can be interpreted as an act of repentance, but it can also be seen as an act of remorse. Repentance is a change of heart that leads to a change of behavior. Judas showed no sign of a change in behavior. He continued to conspire with the chief priests and elders to kill Jesus. Remorse is a feeling of guilt or sadness for a mistake or sin committed. Judas certainly felt guilty for his betrayal, but that guilt did not lead to a change of heart. Judas's end is a reminder that remorse is not the same as repentance. Remorse is a feeling while repentance is an action. Sadly, even the most hardened hearts can rival that of Judas Iscariot. Judas, whose betrayal is immortalized in the New Testament, desperately tried to undo the evil he had planned. However, even as he returned the 30 pieces of silver to the Jewish religious leaders, throwing them into the temple, he could not find redemption for his sins. Judas, one of Jesus' twelve closest followers, approached the religious leaders with a sinister proposal. What will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you? The promise of thirty pieces of silver was made, and Judas accepted the payment. However, this sinister transaction ultimately triggered a series of events that would lead Judas to a dark fate. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Matthew 26, 14, 16. Consumed by remorse, Judas returned the coins to the chief priests, realizing that he was tainted with the blood money, according to the principle found in Leviticus. But instead of seeking forgiveness, Judas chose the most tragic path, he took his own life. This death, considered a rebellion against God and self-murder, was widely condemned by Rabbinic Judaism and the early church. The New Testament also reveals that Judas was under the influence of the devil, adding a dark dimension to his story. He chose such a terrible end to escape the unbearable weight of his betrayal, revealing a deceived and greedy heart. The lesson here is clear, we must refuse any action driven by greed or deceit in our hearts. Instead, we should perform our tasks with excellence, as if we were doing them for the Lord, as Colossians 3.23 teaches. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord, and not for men. We should never forget that God desires us to maintain the right attitude towards the people and tasks entrusted to us. Judas Iscariot cannot change the past, but you still can. If you have betrayed, hurt someone or been hurt, remember that you are still here and have the opportunity to do the right thing. Today is the time to seek the Lord's help to make amends and find the redemption that Judas never attained. The story of Judas Iscariot is a tragic and enigmatic one. He was one of Jesus' twelve disciples but betrayed his master for thirty pieces of silver. After his betrayal, Judas repented, but was unable to find forgiveness. He took his own life, and his story serves as a reminder that repentance without forgiveness is not enough. Judas's story also teaches us about the importance of forgiveness. If we want to be forgiven by God, we must repent of our sins and seek His forgiveness. If you're feeling guilty for something you've done, don't despair. God is ready to forgive you. Repent of your sins and seek God's forgiveness. He is waiting for you.